Hey, I'm going to do some physics problems. Um, for number 24, uh, I'm going to go back to something. Um, I don't suppose that you read the whole chapter. I never asked you to do that. Um, uh, maybe every once in a while when you get stuck, you go back and leaf through what's in the book. Um, and if you did that, you might have found in our book, or maybe you looked on the internet or I don't know what, um, that the maximum, if you have a ground-to-ground -ground launch, in other words, a situation where your delta y is zero, then the maximum distance that you get is going to happen with a launch angle of 45 degrees. That might be kind of intuitive that, um, you know, if it's less than this, you're really projecting forward, but you don't stay up long enough. And then above this, you don't have enough forward velocity um, or horizontal velocity to carry you uh, to that greatest possible distance. Um, I'm just going to do a really quick little proof of why this is true. So let's say we don't know what this angle is. Let's say that it's just angle theta and we have some problem with delta y um, being zero, like a ground-to-ground -ground situation. All right, so the vi would be, that would be the vertical component of this. That is uh, whatever the launch speed is, v sine theta. Don't know what the vf, actually I do know what the vf would be since because of the symmetry of this, it would be negative that. Um, and time, don't know about that. Um, but I do know the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared, negative g. And um, time connects the vertical and the horizontal, so probably going to need that to be in there. And uh, horizontal, my constant horizontal velocity is the cosine theta. And there's the time and delta x. I'm trying to max this out. All right, so if I write the equation for that, delta x is equal to vx times t. That's a v cosine theta times t. Can I get an expression for t over here? Um, well, let's see. What relates to these things? I have delta y is 1 half at squared plus vit. And uh, let's see. The delta y is 0, so I get negative g over 2 times t squared, and maybe I'll just move that to the other side here, is equal to v sine theta times t. Uh, one of the solutions to this equation is when t is 0, but I'm not interested in that. So I could divide one of the t's out, and I get that t is equal to uh, 2v sine theta over g. And that I can bring back here. So that gives me delta x is equal to 2v squared sine theta cosine theta over g. But 2 sine theta cosine theta, that's a trig identity. 2 sine cosine, that's the sine double angle formula. So that is the, um, that's the horizontal distance. And if you want to maximize this, I don't think I have to convince you here. The sine function, where does the sine function max out? Right there. That is at pi over 2. So if it's the sine of 2 theta, you need this to be equal to pi over 2 or 90 degrees. So the theta would be 45 degrees. So that's just a quick sketch of the proof there. <clears throat> I should have given you permission at the beginning of this video to just skip that. <laughs> Too bad. Um, <clears throat> so uh, you kind of need to know that to do this number 24 because you need to, they ask um, how much less was Powell's range than the maximum possible range. Um, so... I need to be able to compare these. Um, so let's see. This dude jumped 8.95. Oh, 
Oh, and we have his takeoff speed. Oh, so I don't need to. So I just need to do. I think I just need to compare it to this. I did all the work here, so I need to redo that. The maximum possible range is uh, v squared. His takeoff speed was nine point five squared uh, times the sine of two theta. Of course, his maximum. That so this is just going to be one. Right, because we're going to maximize that over 9.8. Uh, let's do that. I put new batteries in my calculator. Big day. Um, let's see. So that's 9.2. They give us this to the nearest centimeter, so I will compare. So his distance is 8.95 meters and the max distance if he hit exactly that right launch angle with that velocity um, would be 9.21 meters. So it looks like uh, 26 centimeters is the difference there. So there you go. Um, Twenty. This is not. Um, sometimes I have students who would ask. If you were all in class, I bet you somebody would ask, um, "Should I memorize this formula?" And I would say, um, you know, it depends on what your, uh, on how much cranial capacity you have. I suppose. Um, if it were me, I don't think I would memorize this. I mean, I'm a I'm a physics teacher, by. Uh, trade. And um, I don't think, I mean, kind of when I'm right in the middle of teaching this material, I might have this somewhere in some dark corner of my mind to be dusted off if I need it. But um, it's easy to derive that. So I would say no. But, um, you know, if you feel like you can handle that and you're good at memorizing things, then go for it. Um, a stone is catapulted at time t0 with an initial velocity of 20 meters per second at 40 degrees. So we can go ahead and find the components of that. Just assuming that we need to do that, not even reading any more into the problem. So let's see, that is 15.3 and twelve point nine. Okay. Um, what are the magnitudes of the horizontal vertical components uh, of its displacement from the catapult site at time 1.10 seconds? And then repeat at 1.8 and repeat at 5 seconds. All right. So uh, let's see. In the, what did they want first? Horizontal. So in the horizontal direction, we have uh, delta x is equal to vx times t. So that's 15.3 times 1.1. Is that what it is for this part a? I think so. And we've got 16. Point eight meters, and then for part B, they want to know about the delta y. Uh, that's going to be uh, one half a t squared plus v i t. So that is negative four point nine times one point one squared plus twelve point nine times 1.1. About 8.26 meters. Um, and part C, they want to repeat 
um, with the time 1.8. And, you know, at some point, you might start wondering to yourself, wait a second, it's going to hit the ground at some point. So we need to be careful here and figure out when that time is because we can't start doing times after that. And then we get negative delta y's, which means it's, it's underground. So I think we need to be careful. Um, maybe I'll check that in a sec. I'll see how these answers come out. And delta y is going to be negative 4.9 times 1.1 squared. Let's, nope. Just kidding. 0.8 squared, 12.9 uh, times 1.8. Let's pop those out. And, oops, that's this one. And negative 4.9. I didn't get a negative here, so we're not underground yet. Um, so I think what I will do now is uh, just to be sure about, because the next time they're asking for is at 5 seconds. That's a good bit into the... Uh, future here. So if I wanted to make the, um, the vertical position function, where that's negative 4.9t squared plus 12.9. Uh, oh, I had something close to that in here already. And then this one, we're starting from ground, so I don't have anything. Oops, dang it. Negative uh, 4.9 squared plus 12.9. All right, and looks like I was doing something kind of similar to that. So it looks like it hits. I don't need to find exactly where this is, but sometime between two and three seconds, that's when it gets back to the ground. So here um, in 26, they want to know the horizontal and vertical components of the displacement. Well, the vertical, it's going to be back on the ground, so the delta y is 0. And the horizontal, assuming that it just stuck where it landed, it's, I guess I can use that time there since I found that. Um, I will go ahead and get that. So it's between 2 and 3, left bound 2, right bound 3. Oops. That's going to give me an error. I messed up into 2 and 2. Let's try it again. Uh, second, find a 0. Do 2 and 3. So uh, 2.63, and that gives me forty point two meters. Oh, you could also have used, since we just used this, that's that range. Actually, you have, uh, yeah, that's right, you can use this and just put another theta in there. Um, put that 40 degrees in there. All right, uh, number 28. In figure 434, four, uh, we're launching a stone up at a cliff. Um, and cliff has a height h, initial speed 42 meters per second. Uh, that's coming up on 100 miles an hour. Uh, angle of 60 degrees. And. Um, the stone strikes point A, which is up here, at 5.5 seconds. 
and we want to find the height of the cliff, the speed of the stone just before impact at A, and the maximum height H. All right, so uh, let's do those things. So um, let me set up my columns here. Initial velocity is 42 times the sine of 60 degrees. 36.4 and the Vx, I know what the cosine of 60 is, that's a half, so that's just going to be 21. And uh, the time is 5.5 seconds. And the delta y here is, uh, well, it starts here and ends here, so the delta y is actually that h value that we're, gonna, we're looking for in, is that part a? Yep. Um, and then final velocity, I think I am going to need that for some later part. Uh, so here, I think I have these three things and want that one, so I think I can do part A straight off the bat with my old friend 1 half AT squared. So delta Y is equal to negative 4.9 times 5.5 squared plus 36.4 times 5.5. All right. And call that fifty two point zero meters to three significant figures. Um, all right. And B. Uh, the speed of the stone just before impact. So when the stone's coming in here, the speed means uh, we don't care about direction. We just want to know how fast it's going. Well, at that moment of impact, it's going to be going this way, and its speed, its velocity will have two components. Of course, the horizontal velocity is constant. That's still 21. But this is this. This is the VF after 5.5 seconds. So uh, I can just real quickly find that VF because I know that what acceleration does, it just changes your velocity, while well, the acceleration due to gravity um, on the surface of our planet just subtracts away 9.8 every second, like the tax man coming around, never lets up, taking your hard-earned money. Um, so negative, no, I'm just kidding, I'm, I believe in fair taxation. It's got to have it. 5.5 uh, plus 36.4. So that is a negative 17.5. Sorry, that's supposed to be a 7. There, and then we need to Pythagorize these to find the speed is just the magnitude of this. So the speed at time 5.5 is the square root. Lots of those things. Pythagorized. It's about 27.3. That's what I got. Um, and last question, the maximum height H reached above the ground. So let's see, when does it reach that uh, maximum height H? Is it a half the time? Mm, no, because it's not going from the same height. The delta Y is not zero. So it doesn't have that kind of symmetry. It's stopping earlier than that. So that wouldn't work. Um, but I do know that at the peak, the final velocity is going to be zero, right? So I don't know this anymore, the 5.5, but I do have a final velocity. So I think we can work with that. So 
I think I want to know sorry that is messy uh, VF is zero can't really do this and talk about something that's even the slightest bit different clearly okay so I think we're good here right I just have to put these together to figure out what that H is we do know that at the peak um, that's when the vertical velocity goes from being positive but decreasing minus 9.8 minus 9.8 and then it peaks and then it becomes negative so the peak has to happen where it crosses over zero all right so uh, my H my delta Y sorry I'm gonna write that out you being good about that you writing down your equations before you use them you should uh, this is I guess cut to the negative 4.9 we all know oh wait this is the wrong equation just kidding um, we need the VF squared is equal to VI squared plus 2A delta Y that's what we need so that's 0 this is whatever that is minus 19.6 times h, big H. There we go. So 36.4 squared divided by 19.6 is uh, that maximum height h is about 67.6 meters. All right, that's number 28. And uh, last one, number 30. Soccer balls kick from, gr from the ground with an initial speed of 19.5 meters per second at an upward angle. I think I can fit this one in down here. I bet I can. Um, 19.5 meters per second. And it's at that optimal angle, optimal if you're doing ground to ground and you're looking for max distance. Um, player 55 meters away in the direction of the kick starts running to meet the ball at that instant. What must be his average speed if he is to meet the ball just before it hits the ground? Okay, so that's, I think that's easier than it sounds. It sounds kind of complicated. So here's that player at a distance here of 55 meters. So we need to know a couple of things here. We need to know where this thing is going to land and how long it's going to take. And then I can figure out how far this person has to go to get to that point and how much time they need to do it in. So um, I'm going to, since we already did this right here, I know that the... Um, that max displacement is when this is equal to 1, right? When this is 45 degrees, sine of 90 is just 1. So it's V squared over G. So that delta X, since I am at that max here, is equal to V squared, 19.5 squared over G. That's 38.8 meters. So a person's going to have to run this way, right? Um, and that distance is the average velocity of the person is going to be, let's see, 16.2 meters. And uh, now, how long is this thing going to be in the air? So I think that I need to go ahead and do um, my delta y equals 1 half at squared plus vit. But I guess I'm getting ahead of myself, really, because I haven't even made my little vertical information column. So vi is uh, vi in Two components would be the same, right? Because it's 45 degrees. Not that that really matters to us, I guess. But um, let's see. And that is about 13.8 meters per second. 
and uh, of course the acceleration is negative g. Uh, I'm interested in finding the time. Don't know that yet. And the delta y, this is a ground to ground, so the delta y is 0. So here, 0 is equal to negative 4.9 t squared plus vi t. So that's just going to boil down to 13.8 divided by 4.9, called algebra, 2.82. So that is the amount of time that this player has to get from here to where the ball is going to land, 2.82 seconds. So I'm going to have to run it about 5 and 3 quarters meters per second, right around that. All right. We did it. Pen drop.